I know that the, there's a split on the left right now between the anti-imperialist left who are pro-Putin pro Putin, mm -hmm. and there's the rest of the left which is wrestling with how to support Ukraine, whether or not to support U.S. sanctions, whether or not to send money to the Ukraine to buy weapons. There's so if I could say something about this, it does feel a little bit like coming full circle to the anti-war movement. Mm -hmm. during which Platypus originated, during which my students approached me to start the extracurricular reading group that had such a fateful <clears throat> purpose in terms mm -hmm. of Platypus. And my point back then would be the same point now, which is to say that the left, such as it is, and of course I think the left is dead as a political force, so it's just lobbying opinionation, it neither has the duty nor does it have the right to take a position on these things because we're in not in any position to affect things. So it's just about kind of moralizing about how we should feel and how we should think. And it's pretty straightforward. War is awful and we should feel badly. We should feel bad about it, about the war. And we should be impressed by the tragedy of it. And of course it's a crime. And just as in the war on terror, there are plenty of criminals. So it's a crime and there are many culpable parties. And, you know, what I would say straight off the bat is that, of course, the United States as the leading capitalist country and as the global state, because it really is, of course, the U.S. therefore has a greater share of responsibility, of culpability. But you could say the police have greater culpability than the gangs in terms of conditions of crime, especially because much of the time there's a modus vivendi and there's a collusion, right? In other words, I'll always remember what Foucault says, the police don't stop crime, they manage it, right? So the U.S. doesn't stop global chaos and political degeneration wars, but the U.S. tries to manage them. And in trying to manage them, of course, the U.S. becomes culpable in them. The whole issue of who's responsible, the old Fred Halliday question at the time of the war on terror, who's responsible? Yeah, Al-Qaeda brought down the World Trade Center, but didn't the U.S. fund Al-Qaeda against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan? Does that mean that the U.S. is responsible for Al-Qaeda in all of its actions? In one sense, yes. In another sense, of course, no. So it's just one of these things. And the left is just there side-taking on these issues is really about trying to figure out which wing of capitalist politics one wants to get behind. And not just in terms of Russia and the United States, or broad, more broadly NATO versus Russia, but within NATO and within the United States, these, this kind of a crisis is going to be used opportunistically to score points and, and to try to assign blame and take political advantage, right? So the Democrats are there to say, Trump set this up by flattering Putin and encouraging him. And of course, the Trump Republicans, can, Putin didn't act under Trump. He last acted in this way. He sees the Crimea under Obama. And now that Biden's back, Putin saw an opportunity to do the same thing, that he was able to get away with the previous administration, especially because Biden's evidently weak and because all the personnel are second string Obama people. So they're even less competent than the Obama people were, who were pretty incompetent, including, of course, Hillary on Libya and Syria. And war is politics by other means. Von Clausewitz, who I think Lenin quoted, and sometimes the left will mistake the spirit in which Lenin quoted von Clausewitz on this point. War is politics by other means in capitalism. But that just shows how wretched capitalism is. War is pseudo-politics, meaning it's a, I think that Zizek wrote something about the Yugoslav war against the double blackmail, a very famous saying, don't fall for it, don't fall for the double blackmail in terms of taking sides in the Yugoslav war, in the NATO mm -hmm. war in Yugoslavia, and then later in Kosovo. And, and of course, in those instances, it can be shown that NATO did in fact instigate, or at least helped pave the way for the breakup, the violent breakup of Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that it's a pseudo politics, meaning that it's it because we think that politics is like passionate feeling and impassioned opinion 
and taking a side. We think politics is like that. It's like taking a side. And it goes back to the 30s. It goes back to the Stalinists. It does. Which side are you on, comrade? Mm -hmm. Which side are you on? It's a blackmail. It is a blackmail. It's a moral blackmail that is pseudo-politics. It's the height of pseudo-politics. Because politics has to be not based on morality. It can't be based on this moral blackmail. It cannot. Because in capitalism, politics is not the arena of justice. It is not. It's not going to be. And even the struggle for socialism is ultimately not going to be about justice. It might be motivated by certain impulses and desires for justice, but it's not really about that. It's about freedom. And of course, that's the difficult part. So it's pseudo-politics, and the left tries to recruit out of these things out of mm -hmm. the fear and passions of young people who don't know any better. So a war comes along every once in a while, just in time for a new generation of people who don't remember the last war to be impressed by the reality of the new war. And the left is going to say, if you really oppose war, then you should join our group because we're the socialists, we're the real ones, or the communists with the RCP. And, or we're the Marxists, and only Marxism really understands why war is going to happen. And only socialism can prevent war. Which is all true, by the way. It's true <laughs> only in the most empty sense. And it's just, look, we are a long ways off from achieving socialism. So Marxism's explanation for why war happens is pretty much fucking useless. What good does it do you? And also, especially because the Marxist explanations are bullshit anyway, like economic interests and this and that. No, war is a political failure. And there are deep reasons in capitalism for war, but it's not economic interest because war almost never serves any economic interest. Some people get rich off of it, but it's a net loss economically. It's not like boon economically. In oh, wait, I'm just going to interject and say, when you are engaged in the game of capitalism, there are times when you have to have, suffer a net loss in order to be able to be productive and get back to profitability. That's not why they dominate. do it, though. That might be true in the end, because yeah. every destruction is an opportunity for capitalism to rebuild right. itself. <laughs> But in the meantime, the costs are not worth it. Now, this is where my Frankfurt School stuff comes in. Yeah. Which is to say, there is no defending enlightenment in capitalism. The dialectic of enlightenment. Meaning that there are only fragments and shards of enlightenment. What there is, it is recognition of mystification. Recognition of commodity fetishism. Rec recognition of the necessity of misrecognition under capitalism. And so we have to be on guard against making unwarranted claims, whether in praise or in denunciation of things that will end up affirming things where they need to be critiqued. In other words, I would say, you know, about the Ukraine stuff and how it is connected to Trump and Brexit. So Brexit and Trump were blamed on the Russians. What if everything, I think that I've told you this before, what if everything that they say about Trump is true? Let's say that he is a Manchurian candidate kidnapped and reprogrammed by the KGB in 1986 <laughs> under the Soviet Union. And Putin really is a continuity with the old KGB. And he's like pulling the strings and Trump is just a bot for the Russian. And he wins the election and installs like some pro-Putin regime and even establishes fascism and rounds up all the Democrats and all the leftists and puts them in concentration camps and has some, what is it, Alexander Durgan, white nationalist, like some kind of something or other, and right, like, fine. You know what? The task of Marxists and socialists remains the same. It remains, mm -hmm. nothing is different. In other words, the task of Marxists under the Nazis was no different than under the Weimar Republic. It's it was the class to organize the working class yes. to be a political force. Yeah, That's right. And it's, so mm -hmm. the idea that like, we have to stop this from happening. Blah. No, first of all, we can't. And second of all, that's not the task. Mm -hmm.